Southeastern 14 is presented by Bet Online, which has been your tournament bracket headquarters all tournament season. A lot more in store for you in sports this year with Bet Online. MLB is here, NBA, NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your spring and summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that is B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Lee at Southeastern 14, joined by Chase Robinson. Excited to have Chase on board. Going to be doing some work for us going forward. We're talking SEC football. It is early April, but if you live in the South, you know it is never early to be talking SEC football, uh, Chase. I don't think it ever gets old in our neck of the woods, does it, sir? It doesn't. I mean, it's it's college football season year-round, and you think of – spring football now but you got the transfer portal you got everything going on within the game that uh that makes it a a year-round sport so i'm excited to be on the team talking some uh, sec football with you today chris yeah when we're doing this we're, we're part hosts we're part air traffic control there's just so much going on these days in college football but we try to stay on top of it and looking forward to doing the show today chase let's start with missouri today uh the, the tigers last year I think we're a little bit of a surprise. Now, I had them as my sleeper team. Now, I, I did not expect Missouri doing exactly what it did last season and, and putting on a, I'm not going to say a dominant run through the latter half of the SEC schedule, but I remember that win over Tennessee that was so dominant uh, and that one for sure. And just a team that overachieved in the win-loss record. But it feels like Eli Drinkwitz has kind of got it going down in Columbia now with some of the NIL things he's done. and. Um, all those things. Pretty excited to see what they've got this year. We've got three key questions to cover about the Tigers. Um, I'll give them to you, and I'll, I'll let you answer them. Uh, first of all, the offense. Cody Schrader last year was tremendous. Uh, SEC Player of the Year type season. How does that offense look without him? I mean, there's no, there's no denying that he was a huge piece of that offense last year. I mean, 1,600 plus yards, um, uh, 14 touchdowns. He was able to make some catches as well, uh, and he did all that on 276 carries. So he got the ball a lot uh, for the Missouri offense last year. And so now you have to think, well, what happens when you lose a guy like Cody Schrader, um, who was an integral part of your offense? Well, in this day and age, you you go to the portal, and so that's what Missouri has done. And I think Eli Drinkwitz, you brought him up a minute ago, has done a tremendous job with this Missouri program, um, taking them from – I was at a Missouri-Auburn game a couple of years ago, and um, they, they were not playing good football uh, at, at that point. But you could tell these players believed in Eli Drinkwitz and, and his message, and that showed last year. And he's a guy who – He's innovative. He uh, believes in what's going on in college football right now. So he went to the portal. He got a couple of guys. Uh, Marcus Carroll from Georgia State also uh, picked up uh, Nate Noel um, from uh, Appalachian State. Those two guys are now in the running back room at Missouri. And, you know, it, it's hard to replace a guy like Cody Schrader, but it's going to take a couple of guys to get those numbers. And Carroll and Noel are kind of the guy, the guys I think that are going to step up in that running back role and and help lead this offense. Of course, you got Brady Cook, the the quarterback there for Missouri, was able to watch their uh, spring game. They actually did their spring game a couple of weeks ago as as they traditionally under Eli Drinkwitz do spring practice really early, get it done before spring break, so no distractions or anything. And so I was able to watch their spring game. Brady Cook looked good once again. I think consistency is going to be key for him this year, especially when you have a veteran quarterback uh, like Cook. They also have Drew Pine in the uh, quarterback room now. Uh, he was uh, spent some time at Notre Dame, most recently at Arizona State, uh, but he will uh, – assume the backup quarterback role he may give Brady Cook a run but the way Cook has been especially last year and now to have these pieces around him that he does he's got some good receivers and then we mentioned Carroll and Noel as well as running back uh, I think Brady Cook's in a good position to have a good year at quarterback but uh, you to replace one guy like Cody Schrader they had to go get two and I think they found two good guys with Carroll and Noel in the running back room. 
Yeah, I, I think the offense looks good. I mean, anytime you've got a quarterback that's played as much ball as Brady Cook, that's helpful. I think they've got something like their top seven receivers left. Schrader, that look, it's a big ask to replace him. But th- he was not a kid that, if we had done this a year ago, was a household name in the SEC right. either. I'm not knocking what Cody Schrader did, but running back is one of the more easily replaceable positions in college football these days. It is, and uh, but again, it's going to be a tall task to replace him. The amount of yeah. carries, the amount of yards that he had yes. for Missouri because they kind of centered their offense around him. So I'm interested to see where these new guys step up. You brought up wide receivers uh, too, and that's a really strong room. And some are saying this could be the the best, uh, you know, the the deepest wide receiver room in the SEC. We'll see how that pans out when we get into the season. But they do have a very strong receiving room that I think is going to help them a lot as well especially, again, with the consistent play of Brady Cook. All right, question number two from Missouri. How will this defense look in the trenches? How can it win in the trenches more specifically? Darius Robinson gone. We're doing this early April, so he may or may not have been a a first-round pick uh, by the time you you hear this. So what's it look like for that, that defense? I know that these guys aren't on the trenches, but when you lose, what, three-fourths of your starting secondary, as yeah. they did, and those guys were all good players. There's complimentary football. Your, your pass rush has to to cover what your, you know, get home before you back in, lose this coverage, all those things. How, how all that shapes out will be very interesting, Chase. It really will, and that's something I was really watching when I watched their spring game is what the defensive line looked like because they're, again, missing some pieces, but it looked really strong. And uh, I saw guys like uh, Chris McClellan. He's transferred in from Florida uh, to Missouri. He had some really big moments uh, in that uh, spring game for Missouri. Also guys like uh, Joe Moore, Ty Montgomery, Austin Firestone, uh, those were, were guys who really stepped up uh, there in the trenches on defense for Missouri. So I think even with some losses, and again, they're having to replace some key guys, and multiple guys are going to have to step up to replace some of these guys that they've lost from last year. But I really like these guys on the defensive line uh, and how they played. They're big. They can move. Uh, and and I think that's going to be a, a big part of this Missouri team this year, and they're going to need it to be. Uh, with the offenses that they'll be facing uh, in SEC football. You mentioned the secondary uh, as well. Uh, they've got some uh, some big-time plays because you think about in the spring game, uh, these guys on the secondary were going against some of these really good wide receivers we were just talking about that are coming back from Missouri. Yeah. And so uh, Marcus Clark, Caleb uh, Flagg, uh, Jamarian Wayne, those were big time contributors in the secondary. That are uh, Those are names to, to watch heading into the season that are going to think that I think are going to be uh, big, big contributors in the secondary for the Tigers. Okay, question number three, can the Tigers replicate last season's success? It's been an interesting decade. Now it's more than a decade now for Missouri since it entered the SEC. That first year, five and seven overall, two and six in the league. Then Gary Pinkle goes seven and one in the league back to back and wins East Eastern Division titles in 2013, 2014, 12 wins in 2013, 11 in 2014, and then it kind of fell apart the next year. And then in 2016, there was a coaching change. And this program was kind of mediocre. Uh, I I bet if you added up from 2016 to 2022, I haven't done that. I bet it would be within a couple of games of 500. Um, you had a probation in the middle of that that kind of wrecked things, too. And, look, it's never entering the SEC. So Missouri entered it at, at an opportune time. Georgia was not yet Georgia under Kirby Smart. Actually, it wasn't even there yet. Tennessee was down. Uh, Kentucky had not really rebuilt under Mark Stoops yet. So it, you could say it was an opportune time. But if you wanted to, to pass that off as a blanket explanation, uh, Last year kind of threw a monkey in the wrench there uh, because you've got a team that went 11-2, and two, was picked near the bottom of the SEC, and, and that was a season that got better as the year went along. I was looking at a preseason top 25. I think it was ESPNs of Missouri was seven. Now, look, we're doing this in April. The, the, the full effect of the portal in the spring and the summer has not been laid before us yet, so we don't yeah. know. But as we're doing this – 
a potential top 10 team again everybody's made a lot about the NIL laws and Missouri Eli Drinkwitz to his credit has taken uh, taken advantage of that uh so can Missouri continue last season's success they're not going to sneak up on anybody this year chase that and i think that's the key they're not uh they're not you know the the team that uh that like you mentioned that are going to sneak up uh they they have a chance to be they have a chance to have another really good season because of all the talent that uh we just said but they're going to be the hunted this year instead of the hunter uh like they they've used to be in 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 recent years um it's not going to be quite a big of a deal if if Missouri goes out and beats another SEC team like you know it was you you think back to last year and and Missouri was winning games and you thought oh is 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 this for real you know is this a for real team and they kept winning games and 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 you watch them play even against you know a team like Georgia or, or a team like that and you say this this team is for real you know and and Eli Drinkwitz has them going that way and and I think they can build on that again they're missing some key pieces from last year uh, but I think he's done a good job of going out in the portal and getting uh, some guys to replace him. Yes. Uh, I think he's still going to work the portal. It wouldn't surprise me if he had more additions soon. I mean, he's doing what it takes to build this program. And if you remember last year before the season, they signed uh, Eli Drinkwitz to, I believe, a five-year contract. And, and uh, you know, it kind of left some folks scratching their head like, uh, you know, why are they extending his contract? They haven't been very good. And then they had the season they did last year. So they believe in Eli Drinkwitz. And I think he's the guy for the program. Uh, I really do, uh, especially based off what he was able to do last year and, and the pieces he's able to put together in the offseason. So I think they can continue off that success. Now, will they have an 11-2 season this year? I'm not sure. Uh, that That's going to be tough. Uh, the SEC looks different, obviously. No divisions or anything they, they've got a tough schedule uh but i think they have the pieces in place to have another successful season and i think um the way it's trending missouri is going to be a team that i don't think they're going to go anywhere anytime soon especially again with a guy like eli drinkwitz and the energy he brings to the program but it's going to be interesting to see them uh they will be the hunted this year instead of the hunter how do they respond to that i think is the big question on if they will have a successful season or not yeah, I'm in agreement with you there. I think when you've got a returning quarterback who's in his fifth year, which Brady Cook is, not a lot of teams have that. Fifth year in the same program, too, by the way. So lots of continuity with the same coach. Uh, and, and a team that has figured out the portal in NIL faster than most did, That that's always a good recipe for success. I don't know if Missouri wins 11 games again and what will be a tougher SEC this year with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas, but, but certainly I like their chances to approach that.